Thanks for joining me. Today's video, I'm going to go over spark ignition systems, which on boilers, these are very common. And I have a little issue with this, that, but not like I had before I did my maintenance on my boiler. No more exploding, but it still sparks at times a little longer than I'm happy with. This tank, 10 days later, after my repair, because I chopped the top, made a little patch plate to put it back together, some red silicone to put it back down, but there's no water underneath it. Nice and bone dry, rust water was coming out of the base, where that rust was, in the back. So that was a successful repair, going on 10 days. Now, I was gonna get an indirect, probably still getting the indirect, gonna hook it up to the boiler, put it here, but that's another story. Let's stick to this ignition module. This ignition module, now this one is a Honeywell S8600F. This one is a very interesting ignition module. Well, not interesting, it's just really, well, I guess, not the safest ignition module to have. Most ignition modules, what happens when, well, say, a failed ignition, it'll lock out. So right now, I have the gas off. Check out what happens with this ignition module with no gas. We're just waiting for it to make. I have a zone jumped out. Now, a lot of ignition modules would end up locking out. Usually they have like a 20 second purge and then they spark for a little while and then they go off. And after three or four attempts, well, they lock out. Here, this thing's gonna spark forever. I haven't had any heat failure since I did my maintenance on here and I cleaned the whole inside out. But I do hear this thing sparking longer than I would like to hear it. Let's play around with this and I'm gonna go over how this works. First, let's turn the boiler off. So I've turned the boiler off. We're gonna open the gas valve. Now the way this works is you have your pilot valve that has to, when you get power, you send your spark, you have no flame sensor, like an official flame sensor. It's actually working off of Here's the pilot assembly. This is the correct one for my boiler. I don't have the right pilot assembly actually on my boiler. But this piece here, this sometimes it looks like a fork with two prongs. But this lights, the spark is between here, the little electrode, and here. So it's sparking on it here. The gas comes out and lights. The flame burning on here then sends the flame signal to the ground. This is fastened to the burner assembly, to the burner. So that's how it's grounding this out. So the ground is actually feeding the signal back into the ground on the bottom because you have your main valve, your pilot valve, and then MVPV is your common. Then you have your 24 volts, which is this one, 24 volt ground, which is actually just your common, which completes your circuit. This valve here, as long as you have one, you have one full amp for your pilot valve, one amp max, and for the millivolts, one amp for the millivolts is all you need. So, now we're going to have to get started on finding out why it drags out and doesn't always ignite because it's supposed to not spark for more than I think two or three sparks and then light 
So now let's turn on the power. I'm going to be a little lazy. I'm not going to get up. I'm going to hit the power with this. I wish I had a switch here. I'm going to be changing it to that. But. So now we're our zone made. This is sending a spark down. And because I'm filming, it's lighting up right away. It's turned off. I mean, I have a brand new pilot assembly and the tubing because I couldn't get them apart when I did my maintenance. They were just locked together. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to change it. I haven't found out that I had the wrong. I think I have a pilot to the right valve in there, and it's supposed to be pretty much a three-way. So you have your two going out to the side and one forward. Lit right up. Gotta love when it does that. I feel like I might have to leave this off for a little while and then light it up to see if I make it fail. Because I believe it's the ground is no good. Because every time I test it, it tests perfectly fine with it disconnected. And my tester, well, while I'm waiting for the boiler to cool off, I'll go over how to test this. So this is your ground. You can either break it here or down here where it's grounded onto the gas valve. Like I said, your pilot flame is being sensed. It's grounding out on your burner, coming back on your burner. It's coming into the gas valve and the gas valve is actually feeding a signal. Right over here, I'll bring you guys a little closer. Let's get a little light over here to help you guys see better. But so it's feeding to the ground there, but this black wire, like I said, is going right here onto the burner. Well onto the gas valve. So what I'm gonna do. I'm going to test down here because what I'm thinking down here, this one is, I never really test one. I usually test from here on this and I can't tell if it's got a little bit of a white film inside here or not. So I'm going to just put that back on. Now for testing purposes. I'm going to use this. I usually like to use my fluke for almost everything, but this has a better display for what I'm wanting to do with it right now. So I'm going to look to there. And then I'm going to take this, send it to the ground on the gas valve. I could clip it anywhere. But what I want to do is if it I want to replicate the problem so instead of me clipping it onto here I'm gonna clip it right onto the gas valve where that goes and now being lazy and you want to check in your millivolt section of your meter for lit all right and I went backwards, I should've gone the other way. When I tested, I'm getting negative instead of positive reading, but that's a good signal. Every time I do this, I get the same result. It doesn't change at all. It always gives a good signal when I test it, which is why I'm wondering I should probably Cool the boiler down. And I mean, now I'm testing this way. But. Mm, tricky. It's gonna be one of those times where it's gonna be stubborn. Last time I was down here, I actually got hit 
from the th the 10,000 volts or whatever it's sending over to the actual sparker because my meter was no good. The fuse in my meter was shot. So it actually sent the tingle to me. It was a little tingle, but it was a tingle. Okay, turn it off. All right. So, so far, we're really not getting anywhere. I want to go over it, except for I'm explaining how it operates. Let's switch here to here. One thing I noticed, my boiler I think is oversized, but nothing I can do about that. Let's see, let's ohm this out and see what kind of resistance I have. I should have a perfect circuit, one side to the other. Now, what I don't want to do is use these alligator clips. I want to test the inside, the part that would be touching either side. Because I'm actually under the assumption, because I can't get it to fail when I test it. Whenever I start taking the meter out, this thing works. It always works. It always lights. It's one of the things that, well, it's very tricky. Because I don't want to change an ignition module if it's not the ignition module. I have no problem putting the correct parts on the boiler compared to the wrong part being on the boiler. Not seeing it make a big difference because every time I test it, I get good test results. So let's see, for me to make this happen, I'm not going to be able to test both of these. As much as I want to, I need something connected to ground. All right, put that there. Now I'm going to test through here. That's loose. Try to slide in and out so easy. That's actually loose. So what I'm wondering is if it feels that loose. But yet it feels tight right there. But usually my meter can't slide in and out of a stake on so easy. I'm wondering. Let's see all of my wires. Those are on really tight. If they're on that tight, don't rip them off. You can end up just pulling the wire out of your stake on. Usually I don't I'm so educational on it. On my videos, usually I'm just troubleshooting and tackling things, but I figured on this one, since this is a tricky one, because it always works, it never fails. Wire looks good there. Because these wires, I mean, yeah, my wire's showing a little bit. But I'm not too. I'm not believing that that's going to cause any problems on this end. So I mean, I'm more worried about my ground. Here to ground, we're gonna go. Let's set the meter back. We're going to go basic continuity. One thing you don't want to do with the meter like this is leave it in the MA and check voltage. But I'm not getting anything. There I am. There I am. Now I am. Okay. change the scale we're going to go to a lower scale because we need to have a good ground okay 0.6 2 k 
okay, to 100. As long as I got, and I've got the 20M scale, so I'm grounded. And that's what I should have. Perfect. I'm getting a little bit now, but I mean, that's so minute. So, I mean, I got really good from here to ground. But then again, on this side, this swims even on this side. So on both sides of my ground, it swims around. I believe that that was the one thing I corrected when I did my maintenance, when I cleaned up the pilot assembly that is here. By me cleaning that, I actually made it ground better. Because if I disconnect my ground, it's gonna remind me of when my boiler was exploding. So let's show what a bad ground is like. I mean, it's not like, remember, it's not like my boiler fails. It's just that it doesn't, I hear it sparking a little longer than I would at times. This is one of those things you don't want to be pulling this in and out as you're sparking. Because if you do, well, you may get a little tingle like I got last time. So, here we go. Now we're going to turn it back on. Now, even if this is a little off, you might have a little bit of a problem. Lit right up. So... I'm gonna grab from back here. Now we're disconnected. This is a little bit of what I had happening when I had the failed ignition that would explode. It would do that. It would try to light, then it would do that again, which is why I'm believing that in the video I made of my exploding boiler, that I had an issue with the ground that I corrected just from doing the maintenance the burners were dirty, they were plugged up. There were several different things, but the actual thing I'm believing is that my ground was slightly dirty. And I'm still thinking at times my ground may be, may be no good. Like there could be like a slight white film in here I'm not seeing. It could be anything. But my biggest problem I'm having is every time I put my meter on anything, I get the same result. I test good the ground. I test good on my flame sense. Like here, we're gonna do the flame sense again. Last time I broke at the bottom. This time, I'm gonna break up here. Yeah, I'm all attached, ready to rock and roll, except for here. Let's set this and that's the wrong side. There you go. Now, there we go. We're coming on. We're about to get started. Every time I get the same exact thing. Oh, background. Attached here. Okay. Oh. Right there. I'm on ground here. And I fell out of ground there. That might be the first time I got it to start screwing up. And I was in there. But I just... I'm actually... Part of me is leaning on. Inside here, it's a little dirty. It is. Let's break it. 
just for the hell of it. Let's break it and see if this is why I have my problems. Even if I don't break it, let's open it. Okay. So we bent it open. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but it does have a little discoloration on it. I would think it should be able to make, but it's probably just too loose. And tell you the truth, I could re-roll this, but what's the point? Seriously. Let's just cut it off. Put a new end on it. That's where I want to start, is just making sure my ground is good. I need a crimper. Because that's where I'm leaning, is that it's the ground. I don't have any failures, but then again, this thing is a continuous retry. So even if it did fail, I would have known eventually it would light. I've never seen that happen. Not since I've done maintenance, but I have heard it click a few more times than it should. Probably wondering if I should have gone with the shield on it, but the other one had no shield on it. It was all metal, so it shouldn't matter. Now here is another wire that could be important. This is your common ground. So a little discoloration, even inside. Which I put a scratch in the wall. Discoloration, but maybe hard to see on camera. But it's like got a grayish discoloration to the actual stake on from H. So we're gonna connect this. I haven't found the problem, but I hope I've explained pretty well how this operates. So at least you guys learned a little something about the ignition module. Of course, my problem's still there, but it's intermittent. But what I'm doing right now is I'm changing the ends on my ground wire. I could have just put a jumper wire from here to ground. But this guy swims, so I brought a few here. But I have these little stake-ons that I can use. See, I have even with one of these, the red, this is just regular, it's regular size. I don't think that makes a difference, but does this guy fit? This should fit down here. The terminal and the gas valve, right? Yep. So now this is going to be a tighter fit over this. So let's get rid of this fitting. Okay, gone. I didn't want to make the wire too short, which is why I kind of ripped that off. The wire is already pretty short to begin with. Oh, and I just did it anyway. Oopsie. I did what I didn't want to do. I cut it and made it shorter. Oh well. Now let's crimp it. All right, so now my ground has two ends that are a lot better than when I first started. 
Move that out of my way. So this way this can come closer. And yeah, now it's not swimming my ground. Now it's actually tight on there. So it's not swimming anymore. Now my spark. You look right here. See, they got some discoloration on it. Didn't really do much, but. Think, I don't think this is the it could be the original wire, but let's turn it on and see if I made any difference to anything. But now, if you wa read your common, this right here, your 24 ground, it pulsates because literally this thing is pulsating back and forth. It's sending out a signal for the spark. And then it's reading the flame current at the same time. Okay, there we go. Lit right up. So, let's do this again. Let's take off 24 ground. That was really loud. <laughs> That's like a clunk. Now 24 ground is gone. We lost our call. But what was really loud was the magnet here got sucked onto the gas pipe. Now what we're going to monitor, let's monitor our ground signal in DC. We're going to stay right here on the micro amps. And we're gonna come up, we'll go, we're gonna go in DC, we're going boom back to the board. We'll come in, over here, sparking. Look at that. Open line. Turn that off. I'm uh, cooked my fuse by letting AC bolts go in. Let's see. Yeah, I cooked it. Nope, there you go. Let's switch to this meter. Let's see what I pick up when I do this on here. Bolts. Now let's switch. I probably should have stayed the same meter, just switched. That's the pulsing back and forth of the circuit board. It's not sending the spark out. 
that's what you'd be reading on the actual ground. I said we didn't find anything actually wrong I did fix the grounds I'm gonna keep monitoring it on occasion it only strange thing it only does it when I'm doing something whenever I sit down in front of it fires right up all right now let's see no tools no nothing on it let's see what happens I'm okay if it did this every time, that little bit of spark and boom. But I'll hear it go for like maybe. Yeah, maybe I'm just being a little too cautious, but like 15 seconds or so. But thanks for joining me as I play around with my ignition, as I went over and explained how this thing works. Because one thing I noticed is a lot of things online don't go over the ignition module. Detail of how to troubleshoot, and you're troubleshooting on your ground. That is your actual micro amp signal, like a flame sensor. Some do have a separate flame sensor, but this does not. A lot of sparks do not. They're share. They're using just the sparker. Like I said, you got a lot of them. This looks more like a fork on a lot of them, and a lot of them's only got a one pattern flame. I'm changing this to this. That'll be another video because. This is the proper one. It's supposed to send gas, hit both burners at the same time, instead of just being a pilot right. So the one I have right now is just a hood going to the right a little bit. It works, but this is the right one, so I'm gonna pop this one on with a new, let's see what I put, with the new, as I say that I've lost it. Ah. Put the new pilot tube in. And two ends. Because I, like I said, I couldn't disconnect it on the other side, so I couldn't get to the orifice, which inside of here, there's an orifice that you always gotta make sure is clean. Yeah, pinch. Big is nothing ever wants to cooperate with me when I need a 7 sixteenths. Seven sixteenths. <laughs> Whatever. But nothing else works. Put the orifice in. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me play around with my boiler, go over explaining the spark ignition system, which you'll find on rooftop units, fur some furnaces, and many boilers have it. An upcoming video will be me replacing this. There's the one in there I can't pull to get to the orifice, and every once in a while this has to be pulled out and cleaned out. So, one hand it's not the easiest, I'm holding the camera now, but in here there's an orifice. I should probably put it back on a tripod instead of being so stubborn. But, and sometimes this gets closed up, that little tiny opening on the tip of that, due to some white residue from the gas. So, that's why I'm going to be replacing it in an upcoming video. And I'll be monitoring this. If it acts up again, well, hey, I'll have to take further steps. But that's step one no matter what.
this was actually, never mind, this is step two. Or three, because the maintenance was step one. Step two was trying to make sure I had a good ground here. I could even put a second ground and clip it onto a screw or something like that here. I've done that before when I needed a better ground, just add a second ground. I mean, you got one here, but you could always just take a wire, you could split this place, bam, put it right to that screw. You put it right to that screw, you got another ground, you can clip it onto the bottom. You could even just send it right to next to that thing, it doesn't matter. The ground is one of the most important things in a spark ignition system. And when these get dirty, you can clean them like a flame sensor. I use sandpaper on here. I find it's the best thing, like emery cloth. The green cloths I use for flame sensors work. They do keep them clean, but sometimes these are never cleaned. And when you get there, sandpaper will make it nice and clean. It's not like a flame sensor where you, you like take the coating off. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, I'm out. Okay, so I went to walk away. And it's doing it. With the door on. With the door off, it doesn't do it. So. That's very strange. But what could the door be doing? or be causing. Uh, how it works. Right. The zone should be opening. Here we go. Spark it away. curious if the pilot's sliding. This is the only way I'm going to be able to see. If it's just sparking, if it's lighting or what. I should probably put my meter on it, but I want to see what the pilot looks like with the door on. Because, okay, now the door's off. On. Right on. I gotta see, I'm wondering if it's starving for air. It's just strange, the door on, it doesn't light up right away. The door off, every time instantly.